In the last episode, we wrote some validations and then we wrote error handling code that actually creates error messages if those validations failed. And we had this little problem that if you run the operation without any proper input, then there shouldn't be any error messages. And I promised you we're going to fix that. And we're going to fix that in this session. Before tackling the error messages, we need to fix a little bug though. So our mistake was that we forgot to add the blog post key in the input meaning that our validations weren't even run. So now when I run the test, you can actually see that the validating code was run. So what we actually want to fix is that if we run the operation without any valid input, we are supposed to early out very, very soon. Actually, we're supposed to stop executing right after running extract params because extract params cannot find the blog post key in the incoming data. And then we're supposed to skip the remaining steps. We already have that implemented. But what we don't want is to run add errors. Yeah, we don't want to add specific error messages because we don't really have input. And you're probably remembering this beautiful diagram. So we hit add errors, the add error step, when we error out from extract params. And that is because we literally add this failure step after extract params. So in a default setup, we're always going to hit this error handling step if we um, error out from extract params. And so the solution would be to kind of bypass all the failure steps and still end in the failure terminus when extract params failed. And there are lots of ways to do that in Trailblazer, but they, we actually have something built into the operation itself. So what we have is we have another failure terminus, which is called fail fast and so I'm going to call this FF here and by using a specific option we can basically make extract params to fail and go straight to the fail fast terminus and that means that this line disappears. Look how beautiful that diagram is and so so the thing is we could be using the wiring API and make this kind of happening manually but luckily we have this super cute option called fail fast. And by setting fail fast through, we're literally getting a diagram or an internal circuit that looks exactly like this. So when running my operation, we do get the expected error. So we actually have the test suite complaining that we have an empty errors object, but we were expecting to have error messages set. So that's the problem we were just discussing. So when I go back to the test, I can change this test and say, we want to have an empty errors object because we don't have any error messages to be set because there wasn't any input. And that is exactly what we needed to implement. So if we run our operation without any valid input, then we don't want any error messages. However, if we run the operation with input that is not sufficient, we do want to have error messages. And now when I change this call to WTF and I run my test, you can see in the trace that, so that's the uh, trace for our test case, you can see that we run extract params, we fail, and then we stop instantly on end.failfast, which is the extra terminus that Trailblazer or the operation provides for us automatically. Yeah, so you can see that we took exactly this path here. And what's interesting is that even if we stop on a different terminus that is not failure, we still have the result object indicating that we had a failure. Yeah, success is still false. So both fail fast, the fail fast terminus and the failure terminus are interpreted as a failing operation and success will return false. So keep in mind that the fail fast option is a very, very convenient way to quickly and early error out of an operation when something failed. And the cool thing is we obviously also have an option called pass fast. So let's assume we had a step checking if there is a root user um, signed in. So this is just some pseudocode I'm adding just to show you how it, how it could be used. And let's assume there would be a check being run here and it returns true if we are root. And now what you can do is you can say, skip all the remaining steps. Let, let's, let's just assume this, this would make sense in this context. And we say pass fast true. And this obviously means that we have another terminus called pass fast and dot pass fast and the option pass fast true will obviously result in a diagram like this and in a successful outcome extract params is not going to hit validate for create anymore it's going to hit the pass fast 
and and this will again indicate a success. And those two options are really just one way to do it. So we found that in so many Trailblazer replications that we edit it out of the box. But this was just an example and I'm gonna revert this code instantly so we can focus on what we actually wanted to do. At the current step, we have two validational steps. The first one is erroring out because we use fail fast. And the second one is actually checking if our input is in the format that we're expecting. And if it's not, it fails and it calls add, it doesn't call add errors, but it basically makes add errors being invoked by Trailblazer and we set some error message. Actually, I'm not very happy with the error messages because they don't really reflect um, on the input. So in the next episode, I'm gonna show you how to use a, a great gem called dry validation and a contract in order to test the or to assert the input instead of doing this manually.